Okay, he is the host of MSNBC's Velshi airing weekend, weekend mornings. Ali Velshi is over here. Ali, great to see you. And he's the former Democratic senator from Alabama who was recently the White House nomination advisor for legislative affairs, guiding the confirmation of Katenji Brown Jackson on the Supreme Court, Doug Jones. Okay. So, let's talk about Twitter and free speech, shall we? And Elon Musk, you know, we're all in the media of some way. Uh, the CEO of Twitter, well, maybe not any longer, <laughs> but he was. He said, our role is not to be bound by the First Amendment. Now, let's just start with, it is a private company. Mm -hmm. They can do whatever they want. Right. Let's, let's get past that. Yep. That's a dodge answer. Yeah, what, what Musk is saying is, but it is de facto the town square, and some sheriff could, should come in and say, what good is the First Amendment if we're the place where people are really talking they can't talk. You think that's a valid argument? Doug knows more about the, the, <laughs> the legality of it. He's right. And I think everybody needs to get over the fact that the First Amendment does not apply uh, to Twitter. This is not government censorship of anything. I think what we do have to worry about, what Elon Musk, who's a really great thinker and is really moving the needle on some important things in life about electric cars and about yeah. going to Mars, I think what he needs to think about is our democracy, which is struggling at the moment, relies upon an informed electorate. And that's always been a problem for us historically, but social media is not helping us become a more informed electorate. So there's a responsibility even by a private company or private actors to say, am I making a bad situation worse and how do I get you that town square that is so valuable without wrecking society and I think Twitter could have a serious conversation with itself about that asking Facebook well yeah yeah no you know look, look. I'm all for the First Amendment everybody all Democrats are for the First Amendment for goodness sakes but Russian bots do not have a First Amendment privilege in this country or on Twitter period in the discussion, and that's the biggest right. problem. It's not. It's not. It's I think not we can all agree on that. Not arguing. Let's on just. Let's just at least be who you really are. Yeah. Exactly. Right. But that's not really where the argument is. The argument to me is like, has Twitter failed in setting themselves up in the past as the judge of what can go out there? And I would say yes, <clears throat> you have. You failed when you threw the New York Post off of Twitter. We're talking about Hunter Biden's emails, and it turned out that was a real story. Right. You failed when you said we couldn't read about whether COVID had come from a lab. You failed. Did you read about this Babylon Bee? Do you know what the Babylon Bee is? I didn't know this. No. It's like the Christian version of the onion. Because <laughs> everyone needs that. Well, some people do. I thought that was not Fox all news. you and me, okay? It says your trusted source for Christian news and satire. I didn't know there was such a thing <laughs> as Christian satire. I thought the religion itself was satire. That's me. I'm not everybody, okay? I'm not everybody. Have a little humility, right? right? So listen to this. They got flagged for, they posted a funny video. This is funny to them, okay? Sensitive content, Twitter said. In the video, they were making fun of Twitter for being too sensitive. <laughs> this is so through the looking glass. In the, here's what happens in the video. This woman who, going into the Twitter building, this is, you know, parody. This is what people do on television and have done forever. Okay, she's complaining to HR about how sensitive Twitter is. And the guy shows her an ink blot, and she keeps seeing Hitler in all the ink blots. <laughs> Okay, then she runs screaming out of the building because she's... This is, sat, this is right. well within what satire has always been. And the fact that they flagged this for being insensitive shows their complete lack of self-awareness about what their own problem is. If that's where the line is, you have failed, Twitter. You yeah. do need a new show. Yeah. I, I... You know, look, I, I, I think people would agree totally with that. Um, I, I think what we're talking about here, though, is trying to get back to having those tweets or posts or whatever the hell you want to call it. But the fact of the matter is, insensitivity is one thing. Flat out 
misinformation, disinformation, flat out lies, not fake news. Fake news is a lie. Let's just let's uh. put it out there. Fake news is nothing but a lie. And things that incite violence, things that like that. I think there is a response. Right. Well, that's that's in the First Amendment. You can't right. You that's can't right. incite violence, and we're all right. We're, no one's arguing. So there's stuff that Twitter's done that falls into that category, and we think exactly. that's okay. I think the issue is no one else is going to regulate them because we've learned that we're not anywhere close to being able to understand this and regulate social media. So could these companies take some responsibility and say? Imagine if we were really that town square. Imagine if we were this place where well, people with differing opinions could have robust discussions. And, and there's a way they can get there. It's not what Elon Musk is currently looking at, and that worries me a little bit. But, boy, if he could do that, if we can create that real town square, what would it do for us? You, you, do it, you try and do it on your show, right? You, 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 you battle people with different opinions with respect and respect right. their pluralism. Right. That's what that space would do for democracy. Exactly.